Every year, it's th- th- this year's just different because there's the playoffs going on. But every year, I need an excuse to get off Twitter mm-hmm. for a bit, and I was like, "Oh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate that. Appreciate you." And so now I'm now I'm gone, and obviously I'm much happier. Can you tell? So Tuka, Tuka Rask has left uh, the bubble and gone back home. His wife is pregnant. They have two kids already. And he just said, you know what, I can't do this. And it was interesting watching Don Sweeney's press conference because he said, you know, if you had insight into this situation, which obviously Don would, you wouldn't be too surprised by this. You know, it was something he came in, he gave it a shot, he played well, but, you know, the Bruins have, I mean, Bruins fans are very tough on the Bruins anyway. Uh, But the Bruins have played relatively well. They started a bit slow. Um, And now without their starting goaltender are probably a little bit, thrown off and and you know this is a team that was heading into the pandemic a Stanley Cup favorite so I mean you can understand I can understand uh disappointment I can understand sure. uh a little bit of frustration uh I don't understand character assassination on this like this is a guy going home to his family uh and you know anybody that says well he shouldn't have done it in the first place well he tried imagine yeah. he just like you know the thing is he tried to do it uh, and it, it wasn't working for him and his family. And I don't understand beyond that what there is to do. Obviously, we all want our hockey teams to win. Uh, but at the same time, this is a humanity thing. And I think that there are people that are out there, a lot more people that are out there stirring the shit than actually believing that he's evil for somehow leaving the Boston Bruins. He didn't leave them in a lurch. It sounds like they were, there was a ton of communication between him and Boston uh, uh, upper management. And, you know, I got to say, if you're a fan of Boston, you're a fan of another team, this is something you should expect to see through September, October. Remember, this is going to continue for a long, long time. And, you know, we've just all spent, you know, some of us 10 weeks, 15 weeks away from our families, at least here in Ontario, where we actually have social distancing rules. And, um, you know how hard that was and imagine it was like, you didn't have to, (laughs) like, I don't have to do this. And, and I don't blame Tuca for going, my wife's alone at home. What am I supposed to do? So the, well, and, and Don Sweeney mentioned the insight, right? So the, People are talking like I saw Jesse, one. Yeah, I can hear you breathing. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't know if that's his breathing or is that something in the background. Breathing, it's his, it's his nose. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's such uh, a gross. Are you bored by this topic, Jesse? Is that what it is? Uh, so bored. Okay. Well, uh, no, no, it's very interesting. Keep going, Steve. Do you know how much I love hearing the sound of snoring? No. Like just, it's. <laughs> ASMR for me. Ooh, someone's sleeping. Hmm. That's good stuff. Um, no, the, the Don Sweeney thing about having insight into the situation and not just, oh, he has, oh, he's the first guy to have a wife and kids and want to go home. Can I, can I just say what's on my mind? People are pieces of shit. People are pieces of shit. And I got the opportunity to unfollow a bunch of people. A bunch of, I'm like, oh, you used to be relevant. I don't give a fuck about you anymore. And just unfollow them. And, and just people are pieces of shit. I don't understand the knee-jerk reaction to automatically just start talking uh, masturbatorially about the military and how, like, Tuka Rask the is military. not in the military. What are you talking about? What? What about people who went overseas? What about them? It's the goalie for the Bruins, you psychopath. (laughs) (laughs) Try being a, try being the goalie for the Boston Bruins. Right. By the way, I work 60 hours. You know what? You don't have nearly 300 wins and your top 20 all time in playoff wins. Well, I did Shut up and get better. Get better. Tukaraski is better than you. At most things, do you understand? Mm-hmm. Holy shit! And you don't understand the specifics of what's going on. She says, oh, he's got a wife and kids. You think he's the only guy with a wife and kid? Fuck you. So there's, there's my little rant this morning. At, listen, we're in the golden age of bad people. And I just, I snapped yesterday and couldn't, couldn't stand it. And I will forever hold it against Tugarask that he wasn't on the beaches of Normandy. 
Mm-hmm. I will forever. Well, he's finished. That's not fair. I I will forever uh, hold it against him that he wasn't on skis holding back the Russians. My grandpa took shrapnel in Salerno, Italy. That was his fault too. Because if Tuka Rask was there, he would have saved him. What the fuck? What is the matter with people? Like th- also, let's talk about the fact that there, there's a specific the job day. of being in the military. The job of being in the military is far more important than the job of being a goaltender for a national hockey league team. <laughs> yeah, no and shit. I feel like that's Actual the adult point. Adam Wild. No yeah, the shit. Heads, the heads no, that's the You can't just pack up and leave and go home if you're in the military. <laughs> but that's what you chose when you signed up for the military. And you knew that. No, and, and, and also, old. and also nah. for hockey fans, for hockey fans to do that. After, like, a bunch of European players having their NHL debuts delayed because of mandatory military service, only to come to the NHL and get called soft for several decades. What, what is with people picking and choosing with the military? I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. They were commies, like, though, Steve. So oh. they, they don't, they're, not, they're not real people. They're commies. People uh, so, just so love, love, they jump at an opportunity to take advantage of the military. There's Fuck a couple off. things going on here. What? One is, uh, just to correct something from earlier, his wife is not pregnant. Uh, oh, she had okay. the baby back in April. Oh, oh so it's even, yeah. dude, that's even harder. That's yeah, even so harder. He has yes, a fresh baby at home. Two, Steve, you should be ashamed for being on Twitter on a Saturday morning in August yeah. when it was 32 degrees outside. How You're dare you? You're absolutely right. You're How absolutely dare you? Right. Why You're even check your phone? Right. Look at the sun. I don't know. Go I don't for know. There's a so many ride. people... There's so many people who, Jesse, I would love to do any of those goddamn things. There, but there are so many people who I looked at uh, in, in the months of yesteryear, and I'd see them going on these tweet threads, and I'm like, bro, go raise your kids. Like, I know you have kids. Like, why, why are you doing this 30-tweet rant? And uh, then I was that guy. And I was so ready for someone to say that to me. They're sleeping next to me, actually, finally sleeping. So I thought I'd tweet. I was so ready for people to tweet that at me. But uh, I get it. I get it. And uh, links, and I think that's it. You, you asked for questions. <laughs> I'll retweet that. DMs, I'll check some DMs. That's it. I'm fucking done for a while. And then I'll be back. It's my job. And then the other and thing And I'll be is, back on the island of bad people. With stories like these, we shouldn't let the people reacting to the story to make it the new story. Like the story right. shouldn't be the people reacting to the story. The story should always just be to grasp and what's going involved it going on with the Boston Bruins and them losing the goalie and all that stuff. The story, the new narrative shouldn't be, ah, people are outraged about the story and that becomes the story. Cause that, and then you're the, outraged the, about the people who are outraged. And then the whole thing is just people being outraged about the outraged people. And then we lost the entire plot. Mm-hmm. That's- Why weren't you guys in my backyard yesterday? You could have saved me from so much bullshit. <laughs> That's the wrong thing to focus on here. I yeah. agree. I agree. Like, listen. So I, yeah. I, so I left. So okay. I left. I did the adult thing. I was at a party. I looked around and I said, there's a lot of people I don't recognize here, and I think that guy's got a knife. I'm going to go. And I, I wish you guys were there to have steered me clear because someone said, you want another shot? And I said, yes. And my friends, Adam and Jesse, weren't there to steer me clear. God damn it. I, I think what you got to remember about um, the way people react to things is often it's not, especially when it's a surprise, it's not well. Uh, and I think, uh, um, I think that the people that were against it, and there were some mem- members of the media who, who tap danced around the fact that they didn't like it either. Um, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. And I'm talking specifically about Mike Milbury, um, who has had just a banner couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and, and I, you know, the, the, what he inherently said in his statement was not incorrect. So when you, if, if you go back and you watch it, he said, you know, Tuca was here and then he wasn't, I personally wouldn't have done that to my teammates. You don't and fucking it, know that. And well, you don't whatever. fucking know that, Mike. You don't and, fucking and, know that. You, were yeah, never you know what? It doesn't really. Shut up. It doesn't even really matter. I think the point is, the inference was this guy's betraying his team, mm-hmm. and you know you could. See, the thing is with the English language is it's not just the words; it's the tone. It's it's where you're leading people, and Mike Milbury, although he's like a baseball bat in terms of subtlety, 
uh, he for sure had a read between the lines here thing going on there. And that's when, you know, for me, I retweeted it. And, and, and it, this goes hand in hand with what he said about the games uh, in the exhibition uh, where he compared it to NCAA women's hockey um, and as in how quiet it was. And, you know, I, I think, um, uh, and then we, you know, we could talk about the Jack Ed- Edwards thing too uh, a little bit later, but I think, um, I a lot of that. well, yeah, it's, it's bad. So my, my frustration point is with this stuff, you know, I understand Mike Milbury comes from a point of view. Um, and you know, Don Cherry came from a point of view and I'm not calling them the same, uh, Elliot Freeman, as much as he tries, has a point of view. Uh, it's just very subtle. Um, you know, Jeff Merrick would have a point of view. Pierre Maguire has got a point of view. Everybody does. But when you espouse family values and camaraderie and teammates, the thing that bothers me is that if one guy leaves to do what he feels is best for his family, then all of a sudden he's a bad teammate. And the only team that you owe anything to throughout your life is your family. That's the only team that you ultimately owe anything to. And I find it very funny that people can lose track of that. You know, the first team in your life is your family. And, and these guys who claim to be big team guys, really good team guys, all about team and team, team, really, I'm a nice guy or whatever. Um, you know, when it comes to anything that breaks their view, they're not team guys anymore. And a team guy is going to understand why Tuka Rask wants to go back to his number one team. And so I found, I found Mike's, I find Mike's perspective out of touch anyway. Uh, I don't get the appeal. I don't understand. Like I know the space needle thing was funny. But he was, you know, he, I think he was being serious. Like, I really don't think he knows where he is and probably doesn't care. He's a hockey person, so he's probably fanatical about hockey. I don't, I don't care at this point how nice, how kind, how generous or whatever off camera. At a certain point, you've run your time. And I think that this is, and I, don't, I hate calling out other broadcasters like this, but I got to say, I think time's up. And uh, I don't know what audience he is supposed to represent that will move the game forward in the future. You know, when we talk about, um, we talk about where we want this game to go and, and reaching out to youth culture and that sort of thing. Mike Milbury is not going to get us there. Now, I don't know if NBC gives a shit, but I do know that the NHL has some say in some of the broadcasting decisions that are made by its partners, or at least that's what's been inferred. So obviously they don't hate having them there. And, you know, that brings me to Jack Edwards who, and I'm going to, I'm going to bring up the tweet because I think it's worth well, it. Now, this is an here, incident that happened in the game. Before you get to Jack, Adam, can, can yeah. I say one thing about Mike there? Yeah. He, he did say one thing in that little clip that I saw before I lost my mind and stopped mm-hmm. going on Twitter. Um, about, uh, you, you know, there's a section of Boston Bruins fans who already don't like him. And this isn't going to help. Now, I don't want to. Oh, wanna, yeah. I don't want to. I forgot what? that part. <laughs> he, yeah, he said that. Now, I don't want to like blanket God. all Boston Bruins fans. That's wrong. You don't blanket all any fans. And mm-hmm. Pete Blackburn said something similar to this. And he's not wrong. Like, it's not, it's not going to help in the eyes of those fans. And so, you know, but they didn't appreciate him anyway. What are you complaining that he's gone for? You said he sucked. Well, you don't appreciate shit. Like, you, you didn't think he was good in the first place. Why are you so upset that he's leaving? Right. There, Yaroslav Halak won game three. Shut up about it. 